Something I want to change about myself is how defensive I am when people critique me. I want to be able to sacrifice more. Learn how to get out of my comfort zone. To be more socially engaged with others. Something that I'm working on changing about myself is listening. If we care about justice, equity, and fairness, we have to accept responsibility that as long as there's racism or oppression or greed, we have to change ourselves to be part of the solution. What is it going to take for us to stop this act of terror? History offers us a blueprint. This blueprint demands that we change ourselves, that we change our daily conduct. It demands that we do more letter writing. It demands that we do more door knocking. It demands that we do more voting. Self-transformation isn't an idea. It's about conduct. Changing our conduct can be learned and it can be taught. Something that I am working on changing about myself is me speaking up, especially during like those deep conversations. We have been told so many times as young people that we do not have a voice. Through this experience with the Freedom Center, I have learned that it's really important to use your cultural and spiritual power to stand up and speak up. To shake up the systems upon systems that impose racist and unjust laws. We have the legacy of John Lewis on our shoulders, and we must take that legacy as a tool to continue in the fight for freedom and rights for all people. Thank you. In typical American classrooms, students sit in rows. Those in the front always raise their hands and seem to have the right answer. The students in the back don't. Our classes are always in a circle. It's acknowledging that we're a part of this bigger whole and we talk about what we are grateful for that day and what we believe in it brings out our values and we learn who the person really is, what's important to that person, we learn what that person is hopeful for. Social change does not happen by accident. It requires dedicated, disciplined, and focused individuals. We study and write about the most pressing issues of our time, dissecting and naming the impact that they have on all of us. We prepare ourselves through the work of ending childhood poverty, demanding new ways of policing, and demanding that we as a nation develop the science for living more sustainably on the planet. And then we coach each other on our presentation and the content of our ideas. In order to truly change yourself, you need people to critique you. And in the moment that they critique you, you feel a little twinge in your body. We heat up, and it's discomforting at first, but it's that heat that allows us to be molded into what we're meant to be. Having a sense of what we call coachability really is the necessary ingredient. If you think you don't have to change, you will change, but you won't be guiding and directing it. The key science to that part is developing the capacity to see someone else's truth without giving up your own truth. You know, for this past three or four weeks, I feel like I'm growing as a person, but I'm still nervous, and I still feel like when I get my name called, I get really nervous. Do you remember uh, when we first started the, the summer? I coached you to speak up. You practiced uh, saying a couple words and really shouting them out. It felt good, you know. The more and more my tone raises, the more and more confident I feel. We shouldn't be afraid of letting our light shine because when we let our light shine, it encourages others to do the same. So when you are able to speak up and you know change your conduct so quickly and raise your voice, you really lifted the group. 
the entire group. Why are we killing unarmed black men? Good job, kids! One of the most transformational conducts the organization has young people do is journal writing. When combined with civic engagement, you're able to be reflective on the international environment, the local environment, your own values and beliefs, and then your own efforts to change yourself. I was more like a math student, a science student, so writing wasn't something I looked forward to ever. But when we started writing poetry, it was like I opened up this dam that was blocking out all my ideas. The world cries me. The Institute helped me understand my value and what I wanted to do with my time, what I wanted to do with the relationships I had. It required me to look into myself and confront the, the things I struggled with. I used to be really shy, and when I came to the Institute and I had people like, coach me and help me improve on how I spoke up and what I spoke up about, it really helped me gain the self-confidence to dream bigger and do bigger. It is right for us to work during the window of time to prevent our families from burning down. Thank you. Young people are nominated by their superintendent or principal. Elected officials nominate community leaders, faith-based leaders, labor leaders. The young people immediately are integrated into a civic engagement project or activity. Civic engagement has been a long-term um, project that we have been working on. We take trips all the time to the legislature, and we take trips all the time to the school board and meet our mayors and our legislatures. We register voters in our schools. We take part of protests and rallies. Racism is a coercive evil which destroys the soul and by extension destroys human beings. And my brothers and sisters, our brothers and sisters, have to pay the cruel cost. The shape of the world today calls upon us to guide our police officers to be peace officers. Thank you. Every year, the Freedom Center participates in the Congressional Civil Rights Pilgrimage at the invitation of Congresswoman Barbara Lee and hosted by Congressman John Lewis. Everyone who goes on the pilgrimage can tell you how much it transforms who they are it allows us to see why we are a part of history. And for me, that was really self-transforming because, well, who am I to my community? Who do they need me to be? When you're at the lynching museum and you can see all these names of people who've died, you can see the burden of history that falls on your shoulders and you can see the work that you need to get done, see who my community needs me to be. You cannot serve and help a people if you don't know how to learn and live like them and how to relate to them. Going into the communities where we see this happening firsthand. The Quinault Indian Nation is a, a semi-autonomous nation on the coast of the state of Washington. The Freedom Centers had three generations of a strong relationship with the Quinault Indian Nation. Titus Kapoman is a graduate of the Freedom Centers classes. Siokwio, Roy, thank you. Onugui too. Anschak Tosla, Laishin, Chetos Quinayo. Greetings, brothers and sisters, and uh, friends and relatives. My traditional name is Tosla, Laishin, given to me by my ancestors hundreds of years ago. It was an incredible experience of seeing and hearing from Titus about the culture and the hopes and dreams and the political reality of the Quinault Indian Nation. This COVID stuff isn't, isn't all negative. This is an awesome opportunity for us, all of us as young leaders, to show everybody that uh, we do need change. This lake was considered uh, non-tribal, but we just won our case with the state and it got given back to us. The students learn uh, that there's a possibility of self-governance. We let others govern for us. The Quinault govern for themselves. It's really beautiful that we're, we're in a situation where everywhere we look, we see green, and everywhere we look, we see life. It's an opportunity for us to realize the importance, but to also appreciate that it's here and that we have an obligation to keep it here.
Titus took us down to the beach, which is closed to the public. We had a special privilege given to us to be there. The glory of getting, during COVID, permission to be on tribal land is a profound experience. Some of our very best teachers of social change are some of our students that have had the most difficult childhood. They are resilient and they know the difficulties and the conflicts firsthand. And so when they go out to advocate for a new law, march in a march, or stand up in front of that microphone, it's genuine. I've grown up in a very dysfunctional household throughout middle school, high school, and even college was really struggling with problems uh, in my family. I had the opportunity here to find hope and find community and find a way to use my voice. The notion that all of us have an assignment that has been passed down to us from the generations and the ancestors that have come before us. One of the things that we do a lot here is confront our fears through public speaking. That moment where you're standing up and you're about to present your speech and you've never done it before. And there's coaches that are just encouraging you. And sometimes you get pushed <laughs> into the water and sometimes you jump off. In all of the years that I've been here, from being a student to being a coach to now being a year away from being an attorney, I've never met a student who was in our program that regretted jumping off. Our power relies on our ability to broaden ourselves to the lessons that are given at every single moment. Thank you. Even the steps it takes to make social change cannot be done by a homogeneous small group of people. It can only be done by an intergenerational, interracial, international connection of many, many people. Not only are we more beautiful when we're combining and bonding, we're saving our mutual lives. <laughs>